So what records do you primarily buy? I buy everything. Um, big time into the proto-punk glam, into doom, jazz. Ooh. Uh, into doom, like, jazz? Doom, or doom and jazz? Doom, comma, doom, jazz. Comma, jazz. <laughs> uh, doom so jazz. If you have a link for that, send it my way too there is uh, there is there is such thing as doom jazz yeah there is. so yeah uh you know into like the fuzz noise rock of the early 2000s oh, and everything in between uh you are you are in the right podcast studio yeah mm-hmm. right now my friend <laughs> oh, man yeah, Guess we have we a lot of similar musical <laughs> tastes yeah. in the, between the three of us like man I mean, age-wise what we grew up with mm-hmm. i mean rob and i on the side we've 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 connected about our love of like, you know, smashing pumpkins, Nirvana, all that, like nineties oh, crunch awesome. stuff and all that. And, and the fact that it's all coming out, like this is 30 years old today. This is 35 years old today. I'm yeah. like, awesome. <laughs> nice sense of my own mortality peppered in with like my love of music. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that now they're doing these 25th anniversary editions and then you're getting like, all new represses, demo they tracks. Are. It's on getting, much like, a better bunch vinyl cool stuff. Yeah. They're remastering it for vinyl. Yeah, you know, there's it's so it's not just like the compressed digital put onto some vinyl. It's yeah, I'm loving it, and I'll pay a little bit extra for it. And then yeah. the collector in me wants that sealed and unsealed one, and I'm like, pull the reins. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my god, I Rob has that. exceeded his music budget for the month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have so many unopened records, and I just ordered like. Like the last ghost, no, not the last ghost record that came out, but the what's the one? Um, uh, the one with rats on it. I can't remember the name. I'm drawing a complete blank. It's not second to the last one, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's not Impair. It's the one before that. Um, I'm drawing a complete. All the all the ghost fans that listen to this, they're gonna be screaming at the reporters. <laughs> all the ghost <laughs> fans that listen to this. Um, I think I bought like four copies of it because there was like one to listen to, but then there was an Australian pressing and there was a Germany pressing. And I was like, this is it's out of control. Yeah. Gotta, and then they're like, know. this color vinyl is going to be at indie stores. This color vinyl is right. here. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, well, I guess I'm not going to eat for a week. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, but I got four ghost records. Got to collect them all. There you go. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Um, <laughs> wow, we could do a whole. This, this could be a whole side podcast. Could yeah, be. bring it, bring back the make it loud, dude. I should, <laughs> right? I should, <laughs> I should. That's Josh's old music podcast he used to have. Yeah. Yep. Make it loud. Yep. Yep. That was a good one. So, well, cool. I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. Well, as much as we would like to sit here and talk about our affinity for vinyl and record collecting. We are here to talk about nutrition and coaching. This is the Inside Wag Nutrition Podcast, and today we have Mr. Rob Henry on the show. Welcome, Rob. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> it's great yeah, to talk to you, dude. Yeah, it's awesome to connect. I know that as coworkers, we kind of orbit the same space, but it's very peripheral, so this is an awesome time to have a touch point. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things that we, we talked about this early on, um, and I can I give Chris a lot of credit for this because he really spearheaded this, um, making these podcasts where we talk to fellow coaches um, really kind of like intimate conversations because your clients that you've worked with forever uh, might not have ever heard your voice, first of all, <laughs> and maybe don't know some of these like you know, more nuanced little things about you that we're going to talk about today. Um, so it's really, we really just want to highlight you and like your skill set and make sure that like that's out there for the world to um, hear and acknowledge because everyone that works with WAG has something unique to bring to the table and you are certainly no exception, man. So I'll do my best to, have to not be underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you'll be good. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be fine. So um, all right. Well, I guess with that said, Chris, yeah, you want to hit him? Let's get right into it. Let's get to know Rob Henry, yeah. nutrition coach for WAG. So, Rob, uh, first things first, where do you live? Who do you share your life with? And uh, how long have you been there? 
I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I moved here around 2010 um, when I opened up an affiliate in this town. Uh, previously had been 80 miles down the interstate in Daytona Beach area where I opened my first affiliate. And uh, what Jacksonville has to offer is a little more up my alley as far as culture, dining, not being Daytona. Uh, <laughs> so I've been here, share my life with my beautiful wife of two years come this December and our two children. Awesome. And, uh, Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. How old are your kids? They are nine and eight, about okay. both the turn 10 and nine. All wow. Right. So they've got their own personalities, got their own opinions, foreman, everything. Uh, <laughs> and that ripe age. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, They're man. fun, though. They're fun. Well, that's, that's cool. That's good. <laughs> they, uh, they into like sports or CrossFit or anything like that? The, both, yes. Oh, uh, wow. Oh. Good. Yeah, yeah. I have one that is obsessed would be an understatement with baseball. Um, and I love it. You know, it, it's, it's like that Wayne Gretzky kind of like obsession where he's out there before breakfast, taking swings and wow. throwing himself pot flies and that kind of stuff. Oh, that's it's cool. really cool to see. Um, the challenge with him is trying to offer balance to that. And uh, mm. it, it, just cause I want him to be well-rounded and not burn out uh, mm -hmm. or have overuse injuries that, 13 and then my other one super into crossfit and he's in gymnastics and trying to get him into a ball sport now um so we're going to look at tennis but yeah he's he's a little bit more in that taekwondo jujitsu gymnastic crossfit space cool like self it's like like one he 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 is like the sport like yeah he, he yeah. is like not relying on anyone except for his own yeah like which abilities. i can empathize a little bit more with i was not big into team sports though i wish yeah. i had been um mm. growing up but it's uh i want to expose him to that whereas he is like a little bit more like you said just into the self and Sure. <laughs> if I, I think like if you if you have an affinity and you're into like martial arts, that is such like a defining or it can be I should say not always, but I guess it can be such a defining characteristic of someone's personality is like you are it just. Can be. I don't know about yeah. you and your affiliate too, but like some of the hardest workers I've ever met, mm -hmm. ever met and worked with have been like former high school wrestlers or jujitsu guys or things like that. They just that work ethic is second to none. Yep. I was, yep. You took the words right out of my mouth. Wrestlers. hundred yeah. percent. They'll out, they'll outwork anybody. Like, what do you think that's from? Do you think that's from the discipline that was established in the sport at an early age in that team down. mentality? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think the mentality those coaches have to where it is, you don't question, right? Like you do what you're told. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're a sponge. Is, you're ready to receive. Yeah. yeah. And it's regimented. It is class-based, uh, which I like how they've kind of shifted that to where it's not going to have the carryover with the eating disorders and things like that going into adulthood now. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the balance there and the result coming out of it is just a hard worker. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Did you, did you wrestle or do anything like that in high I school? I did not. Uh, okay. I was – the only organized thing I really stuck with was swimming in okay. high school but outside of that is skating and surfing cool so swimming was like the official sport of rob henry yeah and then you did like the extracurriculars you said skating yeah skateboarding skateboarding yeah cool yeah. and then yeah, yeah surfing Those self go. sports that's what i was gonna say that's what i was into skateboarding snowboarding it's just yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no team sports yeah yeah yep. um so i guess kind of like on that that thought you know that that track um what did you do um well I, I should say let's let's back it up even a little further how did you get into fitness and nutrition in particular like what kind of drew you to that path i got into fitness um yeah i graduated with double degrees in humanities and english literature and realized that after four years i was unemployable and mm. one of my passions 
had always just been, and again, it's very peripheral, but it wasn't even fitness at that point. It was exercising, you know, and it was very globo centric. Mm -hmm. Um, so out of college, I started working behind the desk at gold's gym, worked my way up into personal trainer, um, became top sales in personal training. And then nice. through a series of wonderful coincidences within like two weeks, CrossFit hit my radar. And, uh, wow. yeah, I started shifting how I approached all my clients within the gym. Wasn't really appreciated. Um, <laughs> very synonymous to Glassman story. Uh, though I think I was a little less cantankerous, but, uh, <clears throat> likely, likely, yeah, <laughs> uh, had an amazing, client who had warehouse space and we really just kind of rolled into the ether of CrossFit bare bones fight club style and uh, cool. went from there back in the early, the mid 2000s. I was about to ask, do you remember like what year that was? It was uh, 2006 is when it came across my radar and it was a series of like the sweat storm article that featured Andy Petranic out at CrossFit LA wow. hit mm -hmm. one of those men's whatever magazines. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, two other things happened within that two week period. And it was very CrossFit. I looked into it, realized that this is what my ethos is. It has just been given a tip, a spear yeah, and a direction and found a L1 and that was up here in Jacksonville run by CrossFit East at the police Academy. Wow, uh, cool. And that was back in the day where we had, you know, Glassman was like the flow leader. Castro was there. Uh, wow. Mike G, uh, Chuck Carswell. <laughs> wow. Like um, those are yeah, some big old names. names. <laughs> those like, CrossFit yeah. heads, the, whoever's yeah, listening, that has been in the CrossFit is like, wow. It's very right fortunate, now. you know, like that was just like <laughs> luck of my time. And, yeah. uh, I, I, I remember the classroom. I remember all the material. I remember the workouts we did. It was just, it was phenomenal. And then we took that in our infancy and ran with what we didn't know. We didn't know and ran with what we knew we knew and shoot, here we are. What? 17 years later. Damn. Wow. Cool story. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Very jealous. Get to yes. get to do your L one with people of that caliber. That's t top of the top, man. Doesn't get it was really than that. cool, and it was very different very quickly after that too. I mean, that <laughs> you know, it really started steamrolling right around that time. So I yeah. feel like I was right on that cusp, and I was very fortunate to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah, man. Definitely, yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Rare opportunity for sure. Absolutely. Um, so how was it being in that sphere of CrossFit and everything? Like how did WAG come into your world? How were you introduced to WAG the next was part of your mission? <laughs> that uh, was a missing piece, right? And being in that CrossFit space, um, fads come and go, you know, and we are all probably part of from, what was it back in the day? The blocks. The zone. zone. Yeah, yeah, paleo zone. You know, yeah. zone into skinning the zone with Rob Wolf and to the paleo mm -hmm. and to everything else. You know, the whole 30 and oh, yeah. God bless uh, Melissa and them. I think <laughs> they did an amazing uh, job with that space for a little while. And uh, But personally, I never felt like it was quite where I wanted it to be. It just, nutrition was always... approached in a very general broad mm. brush manner, right? Like these things aren't as intimate as what we do with, with our clients. They're just like, Hey, here's this protocol run with it. Right. Um, and it worked well enough for a decade and a half. Um, and then I was listening to, I forget who on which podcast, and it was, this is back in the days when WAG was using the uh, spreadsheet and emails. Yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, 
so I joined after listening to that. I'm like, let's go for it. Um, you know, people was it like paying. that barbell shrug podcast or something like that? Maybe you heard of D or Michael or something back in the day or no, just kind of I, caught wind of the company name. How was it? I'm trying to think of my personal timeline at that moment. Yeah, it was because I had start working, working with brute as an athlete. Okay. Um, okay. But I started wag first. Hmm. It, it, it had to be one of those podcasts and I'm sure it was one of them. Sure. Um, and either way, like I got it. My coach at the time was amazing. Um, it's Crosby. And uh, right. Crosby, um, shout out to Crosby. Crosby yeah. shut up. <laughs> Dude. And to see what had been missing and how subjective the nutrition truly is and how immediately I responded to having that subjective feedback and somebody that was doing something for me. And the fact that you can encompass whatever lifestyle you want, you want to do paleo, do it, but within the scope, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, so it was really cool to get out of the headspace of there's no food shaming, there's no demonizing of this and that. And it's like, this is what's going to prepare you for your day. And it was, it was all almost immediate in what, seven years. It's either seven or eight years this November here. I am wow. with wag. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's and so cool. I wanted to become a coach because what it did for me mm. and having been in that space for 15 years, you know, up to that point and still having had that component absent and how significant it was and what it did for me personally, man, if I could touch one person in that way, that's what I wanted to do. Hmm. That was enough. Just be able to help that, one person. Yeah, it was and, aside from you yourself. Know, <laughs> and I just want to share like, you know, I can yep. have as many touch points with as many people as possible. And you never really know. <laughs> it's nice to get that positive feedback, but man, if I could mm -hmm. just, change that one person and then they go on and change that one person and have just that cascading domino effect. That's, that's all I wanted. Yeah. Wow. What was like, what were your goals going in to the program, signing up for one-on-one -on -one rem remote nutrition coaching? Was it just being ready to learn or was it like you had particular goals for fat loss, maintenance, bulking? Like what was your pursuit? It was aesthetic. I mean, if we're going to lay our cards <laughs> on the table, absolutely. Yeah. Aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. I wanted yeah. to look like I put as much time into the gym as I did, which I did. Yeah. It was, you know, owner operator at the time. I was trying to go transition from being a fat weight lifter into CrossFit again, wanted to look yeah. like I did CrossFit and I wanted to fuel for my efforts as well. So, um, it is aesthetic based and performance based, but yeah, right. let's be honest, it was aesthetic based. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And how'd that work out? Did you get Amazing. there? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then some like in spades. Yeah. It's yeah. When you, when you crack that code <clears throat> and when you have like, I mean, I, I think that Chris and I both could say the same thing, you know, like when you have someone that's like looking out for you and like designing that program and you both like equally, like they lay out the plan, you implement the plan and it's like, Oh, boom, it, it, you, you crack that, like that next level, you know, the, the, like you were talking about, you wanted to look like you did all the work that you did, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you figure out how to do that and you, that just like feeds itself. You're just like, wow, this works. So I'm going to keep doing it. And then you get a little bit further and you're like, wow, this works even better if I do that. And you just like, it becomes just like this, like borderline, like obsession that you're just like, wow, like I this I've never thought this was possible. And like you said, you just want to help other people do it because mm -hmm. there's so many people that don't think it is possible. And if you can tell one mm -hmm. person it is, yeah. and here's how to do it. Wow. You know, like that, that's, that's the ultimate. That's it. Cool. That's it. And the accountability was huge. If somebody's investing their time in me, I am the type of person where I have to give back to that. Mm hmm. And, and, and I don't care if I'm paying them to do it. They're still, right. it's their time and mm -hmm. they're choosing to give me that time. Yeah. Um, 
and thankfully, I mean, working against gravity and the people that gravitate and make up what's behind that banner are the type of people that it's not about to pay. They're giving you your time, their time and effort and passion. And it's evident. And so the return on that is even more significant. Right. Well said. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, what, so as, as a wide coach, what would you say is one of the proudest accomplishments that you have? I mean, tough question, right? <laughs> it is a tough question. And, uh, the proudest accomplishment I have, I don't think it's a singular person moment or anything. It's the person yeah, who you empower. And it's the same as like coaching in the CrossFit space or as a way, anything you have this individual who doesn't know what they're capable of, but you see it mm. and you earn the trust in from them to unlock that in them. And that's what I love. Those are the, my biggest moments is that they give you enough buy-in to where you can truly show them what they are capable of doing and beyond and to then see that carry over into other aspects of their life. It's amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, well said, man. Well yeah, said. absolutely. So to maybe expand on that question too, um, maybe what, what's a strategy or what's a piece of advice that you've offered, or it's kind of like one of your staple offerings that you provide to clients, uh, that you give them that you feel most of the time has a fairly profound or impactful, um, uh, the biggest thing I like to try and put out there is the notion that perfection is a fallacy. Like mm. people try and wear this burden of perfection and that they are responsible to you and to themselves to such a degree that it can almost be limiting. Um, so I try and take that away and focus on small things, um, you know, improving sleep, just being present with each decision that they're making and allow the successes to just build and create momentum um, as opposed to this all or nothing mentality. Uh, so that's, I think, the biggest challenge because people will be. They're like, ah, oh, I had this meal and my day wasn't per perfect. So the rest of the day just spirals out of control. And then that can bleed into the next day into, you know, and there's this negative feedback loop. Yeah. Um, would you say, yeah. I, would you say that the perfectionist mindset is like the biggest cop out of all time? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I, I think about that a lot. Yeah. If I can't do it perfectly, well, what does that even mean? Exactly. Right? Or, well, who cares? Um, yeah. Nothing exactly. doesn't matter. Yeah. No. And life needs balance. You need to be able mm -hmm. to enjoy these times with your family. You need to be able to unplug and enjoy a family gathering or just a date night or, or just a day of not being relative <laughs> to technology while still being able to find time and decisions that support your goals. So it, it's, it's a learning curve for everybody, myself included with them. Um, you know, so it, it's just one of those things I don't want them to think that, a day, a meal, a weekend is what makes or breaks anything because it doesn't, you know? Yeah. Well, it's almost like that, uh, concept that like aiming for perfection is just really setting yourself up for failure because it is such an unachievable thing. And if you continue to reach for this, just unachievable thing, then you're yeah. going to feel like you're gassing out. You're going to feel like all your effort is for none rather than seeing what your effort actually has actually done. You know, yeah. um, and that's a huge thing that people miss out on, you know, and like you said, I think it like what you were just said, we're like, it's, it is a, an excuse, essentially, <laughs> you it know, is. it's kind of that all or nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. And it's an excuse that is self limiting. And it's keeping you from essentially being grateful um, for the things that are working out in your favor, when there's maybe one or two things that might not be, but it's those one or two things that you'll hold on to over the, the wealth of other things that are 
contributing to your success and like you said creating and building the momentum um which is really all that's required yeah it is <laughs> to get you from point a to point b you know it is and there's i mean some, you know perfection is so subjective what that means to me to you true, chris true, to you true. josh that's so different you know mm -hmm. and uh and then the fact that we even have that notion which is completely unattainable you know we're, we're human you're not going to be perfect yeah i'm not going to expect you to be right um, i just want you to do your best for you and mm. to utilize us as coaches as the tool and resource for which you're paying and you want at yeah. your disposal yeah right. i um want to ask you a little bit so I, I kind of on the flip side of that approach so we all have clients where general health and wellness weight loss perhaps is top tier like that's that's why they're here that's why they're with us they need us to like you you mentioned the word unlock or you said the word unlock you know we they need us to to help them do that you know what about for your clients that are either like a crossfit athlete looking to perform or if you work with weightlifters like mm -hmm. a weightlifter that is going to a meet um maybe has to get into um, a particular weight class to do that. Um, what would you say are some of the, uh, let's see, what, what are my words here? What would you say some of the techniques or differences in direction that you offer those people that you may not be necessarily concerned about with like someone that's just looking to improve their health? Right. So you have people, I mean, in that case, it is more rigid, right? And you have uh -huh. people who Definitely. are coming into it with a mindset of a time or goal outcome specific like a, to their nutrition. Like a deadline, like a hard right. line. This is happening like, on this date. Yeah. I have sure. a meet on the 30th and I need to make weight. Right. You know, and ideally we'd like you to be at weight well before then, sit comfortable and then not have to walk around with a trash bag, chewing gum and spitting into a cup. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Yeah. Don't, it's not pleasant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and then same thing for the CrossFit athlete. I feel like the CrossFit athlete is more nuanced. You have more unknowns, but you also have, I think a little bit more immediate feedback on as far as like performance drop, things like that, um, recovery, you know, resting heart rate, things like that can inform like how well they are fueled for the task at hand and then how well they're taking care of themselves outside of the gym and outside of the kitchen too. Um, and for those people, I think they're coming into it with a different mentality or at least yeah. it's been my experience. Mm -hmm. I would um, agree. Yeah. So you can be a little bit more the wrestling coach and a little less, the nurturing teacher sure you know you can say these are my expectations for you if you want to meet your expectations and mm. you need to take ownership of that mm. um there you go yeah it's a little like, bit i more... didn't set these goals for you you did <laughs> right and this is what's <laughs> yeah. going to be necessary and i need you know be candid with me completely give me information that you feel isn't even necessary to the process because it is it's holistic it's yeah. everything you know, I want to know, like, how you're sleeping? Are you waking up at night because of hunger? Are you waking up at night because you need to use the restroom? Like, what's your hydration look like? How much of um, uh, electrolyte supplement are you taking? You know, what's your meal timing? You know, yeah, it's all relative and it's all relevant. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was kind of like. I mean, I was hoping that you were going to touch on some of those points because I, I um I think that sometimes when we get a um, a client that might be looking to peak for a certain event, we'll use weightlifting because um, I think we can all we can all relate to that to a certain extent, um, or powerlifting for that matter. Uh, there there can be kind of like a um, I don't want to say shock, but I know that I have experienced this where I tell people you know like okay like we're three weeks out and you really haven't done anything. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so here's, here's where we're at. And I know that we can get there, but you have to do this. Like we have to put our foot down and we have to do this, you know? So balancing that kind of approach 
you know, and using that kind of approach when needed, again, balanced with the people that are not looking to make a weight class and improve performance at the same time, often at the same time. It's just the balance that coaches have to have and often have to learn um, <clears throat> from, from their own experience. And you, I mean, you, you mentioned briefly that you have opened and run uh, a few affiliates, but you also kind of hinted that you were a weightlifter. I mean, maybe you still are a weightlifter, but I mean, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no. okay. Well, I hung that but, up 10 years ago. <laughs> okay. But, but still like, so you have the confidence and the understanding that like when someone comes to you and they're like, yeah, I need to make this weight class. I got 60 days to do it. You're like, all right, man, saddle up. Yeah. Let's go. And you know exactly what you're talking about. So it's, it, it's that real life experience that you bring to the table, like with your clients, you can speak from a place of experience and that's, I don't know, I don't know other places that can really necessarily say that. No. And it makes it maybe not necessarily easier, um, more empathetic. Absolutely. But yeah, you also know, like you got to saddle up and do this. Like, yeah, I can yeah. want it for you all day long, but it's going to be on you and the deadline's coming, whether you're ready or not. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's either you're going to be spitting in a cup or maybe you need to lift that a heavier weight class. So mm -hmm. mm. if you're not willing to take <clears throat> on that ownership early. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm sure um, you've experienced much like the rest of us experience where we have had a high level, you know, competitive athlete come into us with specific X, Y, Z goals, deadlines, dates, all these things. And through working with you, maybe they found this uh, transition into that radical acceptance of how their lifestyle preferences, choices are in conflict <laughs> with this competitive nature or uh, want or need, or whatever that mm -hmm. pursuit is. And have you, have you experienced like the unraveling of that in a way where someone's yeah. life was kind of trans just transformed into having to just change their opinion on all of that? Absolutely. I mean, the, it's the tough talk. It's like, I understand what you want, but what you're doing is mm -hmm. contraindicate to the outcome. It's just, it's not going to get you there. And mm. you need to make the decision. What do you want? Um, and maybe asking yourself, why do you want yes, this? Is exactly. A huge thing too. And then asking why you're not willing to make these small changes. Cause usually they're not huge changes. No, it's just a number of small habits that add up mm -hmm. to be impeding to their goal. Um, so it, it's why are you making these choices? Why are you not making the choices that support the outcome you're working so hard for in other areas of your life? We just need to bring everything into balance to support that. And it is a very finite goal. And then we can talk about reintroducing other habits on the outside of that. Uh, mm -hmm. And how you want life balance to look like when you're not in a meat prep or when you're not in comp prep. Because uh, they're two very different things. Totally. Yep. Yeah, well put. Um, so one thing, dig a little deeper here into some fun stuff. Not that this hasn't been fun, but <laughs> a little more uniqueness about Rob and your personality. Uh, but what's something that uh, most people may not know about you? Something that most people may not know about me. I can't think of one thing that would maybe surprise people other than that for having a 20 year career in the fitness, wellness, nutrition arena, that is not what I went to school for. So like I touched on earlier, um, I went to school for English literature and creative writing. Wow. Um, so for a, a brief time, I have flirted with the idea of being a fiction writer. I just wow. don't have any good stories to tell <laughs> <laughs> and had to accept that about myself. Sure. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, do you think that, that creative writing, I mean, I know that it was probably, you know, it's been a, a minute since you've thought about doing that kind of thing, but like writing to people, you write to people all day, every day, all day. Yeah. Do you think that that's come into play? Do you think that you find yourself using different kind of perspective and different language? Than Absolutely. You otherwise would have. It has come into play my entire professional career from writing program. Cause I think to write good program for a gym, um, 
you have to have a degree of creativity. Yeah. It, it's not just a robotic formula. There has to be some degree of understanding science and execution and then having that creative side to you, whether it's innate or you've worked on it day in and day out as part of your craft. Um, and then responding to clients now, absolutely. It comes into play every day. And I'm grateful that that's what I studied and it has parlayed nicely into what has chosen me as my life. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. What's chosen you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's what's come to me and, and then what has come my way and that I've found my love for I've pursued. So it's, it's not by design. It's just been fortune. <laughs> cool. Good fortune. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good fortune. The, uh, I think one, one of the last, I mean, I don't know if Chris, is there anything else you wanted to cover here? I got one last question for Rob. No, go for it. My last question for Rob is what is up with the shirt? <laughs> Gotta see it. <laughs> Rob was... has a Britney Spears. Hell yeah. It's Britney. Shirt on... It's Britney. It's Britney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was Explain. a souvenir from a recent trip out to California. I was waiting in a Marshalls while my wife was trying on <laughs> yes. clothes and was going through the t-shirt rack. Wow. And and that, that, that shirt just spoke to you. It was just like. Hands down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hands down. I love, I love it. Good... Yeah, I love if it. this is an XL, I'm getting one. And... <laughs> That's awesome. I, I couldn't be pressed to tell you a name of her song, but I will proudly fly this on my chest any day. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I love, love a good it. Marshalls, Ross, TJ Maxx, fine. I think some of my favorite t-shirts yeah. have been just some random things. Like, this is the only one left, and it also happens to be a large. This was meant to be, and it's $4? Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> I love yeah. it, man. I had to ask. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I had to ask. So yeah, I mean, for those of you, it's a big dude covered in tattoos, rocking a Britney T-shirt. That just, I like the notion alone. Tickles the juxtaposition me. of it is yes. a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. Yes, it is. Yeah, if you are, if you are not, if you're listening to this and you're not watching on YouTube, you have to go back. To you YouTube can go to YouTube and check yeah. out check out uh, uh, Rob's Britney Spears shirt. So yeah, I had to ask <laughs> before we got off the air. Had to ask about it. Um, yeah, this has been great, Rob. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you guys really for having me. It's it. been fun. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Some people get a little nervous about it, but we try to we try to take all that away. Try to just you know, hmm? just talking, man. That's all we're doing. Job well done. Just yeah. talking. So, um, if you want to sign up uh, for coaching at Working Against Gravity, um, you can go to workingagainstgravity dot com backslash join. And Chris, is there a code that they can use? There is, and we're going to give you Rob's code Ooh. today. Yeah, we're going to go with Rob's code. So if you use code Rob H, as in Rob Henry, and put that into the coupon code, and we will give you $50 off your first month's membership, whether that's our Essentials program or our Nutrition Coaching Plus, which includes a video chat call once per month with your coach, regular check-ins in our software system Seismic the other weeks, and then you also get a customized meal plan catered specifically to the starting calories and macros that your coach has custom calculated and defined for your particular success. What more do you want? Use code Rob H to take $50 <laughs> off your first month of nutrition coaching uh, to work with myself, Rob, Josh, or any one of our fantastic, fantastic WAG coaches that uh, you have now gotten the chance to get to know over these series of podcast episodes. So yeah. I do need to give uh, Josh a shout out here because oh, yeah. for years I was his sub coach and That's, reading yes. your responses informed me so much as to oh, wow. who I am how to handle people. I thank you for that. Wow. That well, very cool. I, I, well, thanks. I, I don't know what to say. I have no words. Oh, oh. It's just one of those things that oh. people don't think about, but on the back end, <laughs> as a sub, like going through and seeing how you handle people and how you, I mean, you just, you do it so, so well. 
It's just pulling from that, making it mine, but still credit has to go to you. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that very much. Appreciate that very much. Coaches helping coaches. That's mm -hmm. right. Hey, I yeah. know that I, I, when I sub for people, I absolutely took, took, you know, hints from what my coach was talking about yeah. and what they were, and then what they were talking about too. So, and how they said it too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very so cool, valuable. Man. Very well. Uh, yeah. Again, Rob, thank you so much for sharing some time with us today and we will see y'all next time. Thank you guys.